Hey everyone, it's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming. I hope you're having a wonderful day. As promised in this quick video, I'm gonna show you the ins and outs of cleaning your magnolia stencils and then storage, okay? So I'm probably gonna ramble and I haven't done a video like this in my sink before, so be patient with me. Um, as you're hopping on, say hi, let me know where you're watching from. Let me know if you have any questions, feel free to sprinkle, all that normal stuff. Okay, so um, when, let's see, where should I start? Let's start with just regular chalk paste and I'm gonna show you three different colors. So in order to do that, I'm gonna actually do a, I'm looking to see, can you see me? Can you see my hands? Let's move back a little bit. I'm gonna actually do a stencil right here um, and then we'll wash it, okay? No! It, it never ceases to amaze me. Okay, so um, we're gonna do this one. It says, I have found the one whom my soul loves. Hey, feel free to ask questions along the way too. If I don't see them while I'm here, I will read all the comments after. Okay, so I'm gonna just, I have this stored in just one of those plastic sleeves. First thing is you always want to write with a Sharpie marker on the back of your stencil. Oh no, did I forget to flip this? Let me see. I think I did. Okay, there we go. Now we're right. Um, so, and especially when you're working on something like paper or wood, you definitely want to fuzz your stencil. And I'm just using this green fuzzing cloth because it can pull, not only um, stretch your stencil if it isn't fuzzed well, it can pull up bits of paper. And we're just, just for the sake of showing you, we're gonna stencil this piece of sheet music right here in three different colors. It makes absolutely no sense. I'm not planning to keep this. Okay, so I've just fuzzed it three times. And now I'm just gonna lay my stencil here on this piece of sheet music. It really doesn't matter where I put it because the point is just to show you. And we're gonna do three different colors because I wanna show you the difference in washing them out. We're gonna do yellow, I think this is red or coral, and black, chalk paste, oops. Okay, so I'm just gonna grab a little yellow first. And I'll hold this up closer in just a second. Okay, that was really messy. <laughs> I don't know, stenciling standing up in the kitchen at the sink is not my forte. Okay, so now let's do red, a little bit of red. Ooh, this is really dry. I'm not gonna be able to use that. We'll just do yellow and black, because that's what I have out. And I need to get some distilled water into this chalk paste. Um, okay, so let's do, just do black. When you are washing your stencils out, you're gonna notice that the darker colors are a little bit harder to get out, and some of the darker chalk paste also can stain your stencils a little bit. Not as bad as the ink does, but this does not affect their um, usability. It doesn't affect how good the transfer is, as long as you get all the little holes in the mesh cleaned out during the cleaning process. And I don't want this to seem hard at all because it honestly, it is not. Okay, I usually throw my little squeegees into a tub of water. I've got one going right here. And I try to remember to put the lids back on my chalk paste ASAP. Okay, so this is what I did. And I even went outside of the lines, but it doesn't matter. Ooh, you're gonna see that it is hard to pull these stencils up if they're relatively new when you've used them on paper. Even though I fuzzed it three times, I probably could have fuzzed it a little bit more. You do wanna sort of try to pull them up straight as opposed to from the sides 
because if you pull them from the sides, that is what um, can stretch your stencils. And uh, you don't want that. Of course, my husband had to go upstairs right now when I'm going live and the dogs are just having a fit about it. So, I'm sorry. Oh my gosh, this stencil looks terrible. And I don't even care what the paper looks like. That does not matter. What we're focused on is the stencil itself. Okay, so what I do as soon as I am finished with the stencil is I'll put it face down in a tub of water. Let me wash my hands off real quick. Okay, so no judgments here about the state of my kitchen, please. <laughs> okay, um, so it is face down in a tub of water. This is just a $1 tub from Dollar Tree. I have three of them. Um, you can, like, I don't like to wash a stencil out and then do another and then wash and do another. I like to just do all my stenciling at once, throw everything in the tub, and then when I'm all done, I'll come out to the sink. And I frequently combine all different colors of chalk paste in one tub. I also combine ink with chalk paste, which I don't know if that's a good idea or not, but it hasn't really been a problem for me before. If you're concerned about that, then just use two different tubs of water, but you wanna get your stencils immediately into the water. Okay, so now I'm gonna figure out how I can bring you, hang on just a second, what are you getting into? I left a wreath out, and of course the dog is trying to tear it apart. Okay, so um, so this is what it looks like right now. I'm gonna put my aim my phone down. You can see it's a mess. Okay. So I'm going to just take it out and I'm going to throw it in my sink and I'll move the camera closer in just a minute. We're going to pull out our squeegees. They've been floating in here too. And I'll just set them aside. And I'm going to pour this yucky black water out. Okay, I'm going to my hands just a little bit before I touch my camera. Okay, I don't know if this is interesting or boring or what, but so many of you guys have asked me for this, so I just decided it was time. I think you can see okay, right? There we go, but I don't know if my camera's gonna tip over. Okay, so I'm just gonna turn on my water on cool, and then I'll put my sprayer on, and I'm just gonna hold on to my stencil and start spraying it. All right, that's the front of it. This is what it's looking like now. The back of it I need to spray too. All right. And what I want to show you next is what can you do when your <laughs> stencils are getting a little stain on them. So I will take either a kitchen sponge and a little bit of dish soap and just hold my stencil down and rub my sponge over it just on the front, not on the sticky side. And that usually will help a little bit. These things are like babies. They're not breakable. And you're really gonna not, not gonna ruin them. Don't worry about that. Okay, if it's really tough on there, then I'll use the stencil cleaner sponge, which this is half of one. And I seem to go through about half of one a week. So I'll just have this in my kitchen. I'll put a teeny bit of dish soap on it. You can hear it. I'm just gonna scrub the top 
just the top of my stencil. I'm a little rough because I've been handling stencils a lot for the last few years. So you might think, oh gosh, she's pretty rough with that. Um, you don't have to be like that if you don't want. I'm just gonna spray it off. Get this soap off of both sides. Okay, now I need to move you back so I can show you what I'm gonna do with it. Okay, so what I like to do is I like to make sure that my counter is clean and I'll pull my stencil out of the sink and I'll lay it on the counter with the sticky side up. That's, that's the most important thing I'm gonna say to you today. Um, I have ruined a few stencils that I laid on my counter to dry and I really wasn't paying attention and they were sticky side down and then I didn't get back to them till the next morning. Oops, this one's still got truck paste on it. And guess what? They were glued to the counter. So you want to, if you're gonna just let them air dry, you want to lay with the sticky side up. And with the green stencils, you can tell which side is the sticky side because this side is a little bit more matte and this side is a little bit more shiny and more of a neon color. Okay, now if I'm in a huge hurry and I want to use my stencil again, there's a couple things that you can do. And stay with me because we're gonna also talk about ink and we're gonna talk about what happens when you get fibers in the back of your stencil. So we're not just talking about chalk paste because this is pretty elementary, but this is my little cheat, okay? Um, I will dry my counter off and this is just um, your basic granite. And I'll lay my stencil down. Let me come back a little bit. Sticky side down, okay? And I'm just gonna use a very low lint tea towel that I've most likely made. I have hundreds of these. Um, they've been washed and dried a zillion times and there's not a lot of fibers on these, okay? And what I will do is I will just gently wipe the top of my stencil off, okay? And then I'm gonna pick up my stencil and it's gonna be wet, but the stone is sort of absorbing the water in. So I'll dry that area off again and I'll lay my stencil back down and we'll do the exact same thing. This also helps to get them straightened out when they're a little bit curly. Okay, and now it is 95% dry. And I would just lay it on the backing that goes with it. Again, with the sticky side up for five or 10 more minutes and then I can use it, okay? So that is the story about that. All right, um, next, let's talk about ink because um, ink is definitely gonna be harder for you to get off of your stencils. And I know if you've been watching DIY Dreaming for very long, I can't see any comments. Hmm. Um, if you've been watching DIY Dreaming for very long, you've seen this. This is my beloved Mandela lace stencil that I have used now probably 40 times, okay? It's not super sticky anymore. And I know that is a concern to a lot of you guys once you use your stencils, but I assure you when you put it on your project and you press it down and you hold it with one hand and apply whatever, the ink or chalk paste that you're using, your stencils don't have to be super sticky to work. So don't worry about that because I get that all the time. How can I revive the stickiness in my stencil? And um, we'll talk about that when we talk about this thing that I did on burlap in just a minute. But yeah, th this one's not very sticky anymore, but I just used it yesterday and it's still fine. This is the stain. Can you see that? And um, you're more likely to get a stain on your stencil when you're using ink than chalk paste. 
also when you're using a dark color. When I've been using that silver ink lately, it doesn't seem to stain my stencils very much, but this was dark blue and this was that pumpkin orange color. Um, and then I've used gray over the top of it and black and it's gonna stain. Um, it's not gonna look like a brand spanking new stencil anymore, but it will still work as long as you clean it thoroughly. This one is honestly starting to get to the point uh, that I probably need to retire it soon and I will probably keep it. I'm not gonna throw it away because I have good memories with this and several of you guys have said, you should frame it and put it in your craft room. And that sounds like a great idea, but I have no more room in my craft room to hang anything else up. So, okay, so I'm gonna set this aside. In this tub right here, right there, is the stencil that I just did before I came live on this tea towel. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. Isn't that cute? And I used black ink, okay? So, as soon as I was done with it, I put it face down in another tub of water. Rinse this one out, get it out of the way. Honestly, you only need one, but I wanted to, one tub, but I wanted to show you guys a bunch of things. Okay, so, um, can everyone see okay? I hope so. Okay, so this was ink and it did stain. I'm gonna put it in the sink, and then I'll move you closer so you can see. Throw those squeegees in that one. Okay, don't tip over and fall into the sink, please. Let's see. For you guys, this is better far a little bit further away. Okay, so this stencil does have the start of some stains on it. Can you see right around the edges where they tend to get the stains the most? And I'm gonna just rinse it off to see what the situation is. I'll rinse the, the front of it and the back of it. Okay, and I can see that there are some pretty good stains. They're not gonna affect the quality, but it does bug me. So I'm gonna use my stencil cleaner sponge that you can order from Magnolia. My website is magnoliadiy.com and I will drop links when I'm all done. And I am going to just start with dish soap working on the edges. If you're just joining me, stencils are like babies. They're not very breakable. And if, you, if it's a brand new stencil and you get two sides kind of stuck together, if you put it in water, you're gonna probably be able to get it pulled apart. So don't, don't fret, don't be afraid of them. I have people tell me all the time that they're afraid to use their stencils. Like, oh my word, obviously I'm not afraid of mine. I'm just looking where the mesh is like where this hat is right here. There's a little bit of a stain there, but that's not gonna hurt anything. It's not clogging the, the holes in the mesh. I really scrubbed it good. So I want to make sure that I get all of that dish soap off. All right, let's see. This did reduce some of the stain, and um, I can keep working on it, but honestly, none of these stains are in important spots, and Mia, no. The thing is, if I had brought it to the sink immediately and washed it immediately with the sprayer, I would not have near as many stains on my stencil, but I don't care about that at this point. So look, see, it's just fine. I'm gonna lay it face down on the counter back here. Um, let's get all these squeegees out. 
these guys you can clean with your stencil cleaning sponge also. Mine are starting to look cruddy because I've used them so much, but that does not affect how well they work in any way. Okay, next we're gonna, I'm gonna show you one that I just did on a piece of burlap um, that, let's come back up here. I'm gonna move you. Okay, this one I'm gonna show you next. I did on a piece of burlap and burlap is hard to stencil, to be honest with you. If you're just joining me now, we're doing, all, I'm talking about everything pertaining to cleaning your stencils. And I really want you to see that it's not hard and there's no mystery to it. I don't use wipes or any of that kind of stuff. I just wash mine in cool water. When absolutely necessary, I might add a teeny little drop of dish soap which we have in a pump over here. Okay, so when you're working on burlap, um, it can tend to get some fibers in it. And I just did a project with this stencil right here. I'm gonna show you up close in just a second this. Let's see. This one. Okay, so I'm gonna throw it in the sink. Move this back. And I'm going to let the door open the door so my dog can go into the laundry room because I think that's what she's crying about. Mia is our drama queen. Seriously. Okay, so let's come close. And if you look down into the sink, you can actually see the fibers that are stuck. Can you see that? the fibers that are stuck on the back of my stencil. Um, they'll, if your stencil's been soaking for a while, they'll almost start to roll up and roll off. Can you see that right there? So when you're stenciling fabric, and especially something like burlap, you're gonna get that. So let's clean off the front of it first. And we'll do the back, but I just used chalk paste on this. I'm going to use my um, sponge for just a second on the front. I have been told by Lisa Ramsey, she's one of the two owners of Magnolia, not to use my stencil cleaner sponge on the back of my stencils, the sticky side, which I'm not exactly sure why not, but I'm gonna believe her. Okay, so I can still feel the fibers and I can even see them. Can you guys see all these fibers and stuff that are stuck on it right now? Those came straight off of the piece of burlap, but they're not stuck there permanently. They're, they're starting to roll up and roll off. So if you'll just, ooh, that water's really cold. Just be patient and work your stencil a little bit with your hands. You'll be able to get those fibers sort of rolled up and rolled off. Okay, and as a last resort, if it is super loaded with fibers from what you stenciled, you can take just a regular kitchen sponge and gently do what you were doing with your hands. You're basically trying to get the fibers to roll up uh, or fuzz or whatever it might be that's stuck in the back of your stencil. This is what can make your stencil get clogged and it's also what can make your stencil not be sticky at all. Okay, so this looks good to me. I'm gonna hold it up to you and show you. Can you see the difference? I mean, there's still, I could still work a little bit on it.
but I would say that I have at least, let me set this down for a second. I have about 90% of the fuzz that was on there off. Um, and it's gonna be fine. So let, let me show you one more time how I cheat to get my stencils dry quicker. And then I, um, let's see, I will look at your questions. Yes, yeah, Susie says she only uses cold water. I use cold to sort of warm. If my hands are starting to feel freezing, I can't get my comments, there we go. Then I will, um, I will do a little bit warmer, but usually I, mine is just lukewarm when I'm working with it. Uh, and Susie said, she's a pro, she's a friend of mine. Um, she says that burlap is very fibrous, that's so, so true. Okay, so this is my cheat, and I'm gonna show you it with the fuzz cloth too. Okay, it's wet. So we want to dry it off. I'm going to just pat the top of it dry with this low lint towel. And then I'm taking my fuzzing cloth. Did you notice that the inside of it is a different color? Mine needs to be washed because it has chalk paste on it. Um, this side here, this gray side, is meant for you to, you can use that side to fuzz your stencils too if you want, but it's a place for you to pat your stencils dry if you're in a hurry. There's not very much lint on it. And uh, that is one way to get your stencils dry quicker. Okay, and I still like to use my good old uh, flower sack tea towel. And there we go, it's dry. So, so the basics are then I'm gonna put it back, I have the thing that it's going on here. I'll make sure that I put it back on uh, the sheet that it goes on and I've written on the back of it with the Sharpie, this was a thin Sharpie because I couldn't find my fat one, um, what the stencil is so that I make sure that I put the stencil back on the right side because that's important. If you put it on the wrong side, it can be a little difficult to get it off. Oh, and let me show you another trick and then I'll stop moving the camera around. Okay, so, sometimes it's hard to get your stencil back on the piece of backing that it goes with, okay? You know, to get it to lay exactly right is hard. The trick is, if you lay it with the sticky side up, then you can literally just lay the backing over the top of it and then just straighten it out a little bit and you're good to go. That is an, a much easier way to get it on. And then these little bubbles, they aren't gonna make any difference. Um, but wasn't that easier than fighting to get it to do what you wanted? Let's see. Could you share at some point how you store your stencils? Uh, well, one thing I can share with you on that right now is that for the smaller ones, um, I gave up on the little plastic sleeves that they come in because I don't know. And I started putting them in these Avery page holder things, the ones that are, will fit. I put them in that. And then I have this container, this a uh, set of drawers in my craft room that's called a Alex. It's from Ikea, it was not expensive at all. That has wide, really shallow drawers and it will fit all of the stencils, even this Mandela. The only thing it won't fit is the, the there's like four super huge ones. One of them is the Christmas pattern. It's like 18 by 18, I think. And that one I have to kind of curve it just a little bit in the drawer, but I just store them in the drawer. But I'm um, trying to figure out how to organize those by season. So I don't know if you guys have ideas. I was thinking to just go the old fashioned route, which I like paper, I don't know if you do, and um, put all the ones that are 
4th of July in a folder, you know, inside these little sleeves, in, tucked inside of a folder that said 4th of July. And then all the Christmas and all the faith and, you know, but I haven't done that yet. So let's see, what are the other questions I have? You love the dock on the stairs. Yeah, well, and look at my stairs, you guys. So we had hardwood put in, but what I didn't realize was that this enormously expensive proposition of having carpet torn out on the stairs and the landing and hardwoods put in, it wasn't going to include them painting the front of the steps. <laughs> Can you see that? So that's one more project that either I'm going to have to do or I'm going to have to hire someone to do it. But yes, um, that is, that's Molly, I think. Um, Mia was the one that was over here trying to chew up this little wreath that I had sitting down below. Let's see. Any tips for when they lose their stickiness? Okay, Sandy, that's a really good question. Um, at the start of this video, I talked about this one. This is my Mandela lace that's been used probably 40 times. Obviously, it's not sticky anymore, but when you lay it down on top of something and you press it down, like let's bring this down one more time. So pretend I'm stenciling on something right here. And I lay it down, I'm gonna press it down. And then with this hand, I'm gonna hold it still and I'm gonna apply my medium, whatever that is with this hand. It still works, but I do understand that that is frustrating. So a couple of tips for reviving your stickiness when your stencils aren't sticky anymore. And if you use them on fabric and burlap right away, they're gonna lose their stickiness and paper a little quicker than other things um, because you're gonna get some amount of fiber stuck in the back. Okay, so one thing you can do is put it in a tub of water, clean, and let it soak for an hour or two in cool water. And then you're gonna fill the back of it with your fingers like I just showed you with the burlap and you're gonna kind of try to rub away any fibers or anything that you can feel that's stuck in here. And oh my word, this needs to have that done. I can feel, I can feel tons of fibers in that. Um, so I would just soak it for an hour or two in cool water, use my fingers to try to sort of roll, ball up and roll away whatever fibers might be stuck in it. And then you can use an antibacterial wipe on the sticky side. It has to be anti antibacterial. It can't just be a baby wipe because those are bad for your stencil. It has to be antibacterial. And that will sometimes um, revive a little bit of the stickiness. So soak it, then rub it gently with your hands to get the fibers off. Dry it and then use an antibacterial wipe. Okay, let's see what other questions do I have. My video is stuck. Is it stuck for anyone else? Jerry, you can hop off and then hop back on and it should be fine. Nancy says my video is acting weird too. I don't know. It's the same for me, but you guys know I'm terrible with technology. Okay, Nancy says that she stores her stencils in page protectors in a binder. Larger ones she keeps in the Magnolia shipping box. That's a great idea. Donna says she uses the Avery sleeves too. Um, let's see. Oh, did I put my stencil on the wrong back? Oh, sorry. Um, would using a low heat blow dryer remove, reactivate the sticky? No, uh, don't do that. Um, I can't remember exactly why, but I was told that that was not a good idea. Um, that if your stencils get hot, it can cause the mesh to sort of melt. So I don't, I don't know. I don't think that using even a low heat blow dryer would revive the sticky. I think you're better off to soak it, push away the fibers if, if it's not as sticky as you want it to be, 
and then um, dry it and then use an antibacterial wipe. Let's see what else do we have. <laughs> Susie says she needs a second one of these towels. I do too. I really just need to wash this one. These can be washed and dried. Um, and when you start to get snags like this, just cut them off with your scissors. So I recommend this for your stencils. I also recommend every time you order from Magnolia that you buy their cleaning sponge because this just makes everything so much easier. And they're like $2 and 90 cents or something. Um, you know, I'm frugal, so I cut mine in half and I use half for about a week and then the other half for about the next week or so. They start to kind of um, peel apart after you've used them a ton, but they're totally worth it. The other thing that I recommend are these little stirs. And don't let your chalk paste do what I did. I don't know if I'm going to be able to revive this one. It's been at the very back of my drawer. Look at that. Chalk paste is made from chalk, which is dry. It's not a defect in this chalk paste. It's just what this, this substance wants to do. It wants to dry out. Um, so I would use distilled water not tap water in it. I would use a couple of pumps, like maybe five or 10 even in there. And um, stir it up really good with a stir stick. Put the lid on it, the next day check it, add some more if you need to. And this should be totally revivable, but it's not very usable right now because it looks like cottage cheese. <laughs> it's gross. Okay, let's see what other questions do you guys have. Are you getting bored? Kathleen, thank you for the stars. I appreciate that. Um, cold water, Vicki. Um, and if you have a sprayer in your sink, that works really well. So I think I've pretty much answered everyone's questions. The main thing to know is that you want to wash them as soon as possible. Don't leave them sticky side down on the counter overnight or you will never get them off. They are, will be ruined. No amount of spraying water on them or being gentle is going to help. So always the sticky side up. Um, you can do the little padding thing if you're in a hurry like me. <laughs> Um, and you can use just a low lint tea towel and your counters, whatever they might be made of, or the inside of the fuzzing cloth. Um, make sure that you label your backs so you know which side to put your stencils back on. Uh, don't worry if they're stained. This is just a sign that this is a well-loved stencil. And don't worry if they're not super sticky after a few uses. Um, try that thing I told you about using your hand, soaking it and using your hands to kind of roll it up in little balls. And anyways, if you want to look at any of the stencils that are at Magnolia um, or any of the, these things that I've talked about, uh, my website is magnoliadiy.com. So M-A-G-N-O-L-I-A-D-I-Y.com. But I will put some full links throughout the comments since I forgot to do that at the start. Um, if you guys have questions, put them in the comments too. If you have friends that are stencilers that um, you think are struggling with getting their stencils clean, feel free to sprinkle this. And I will be live again here within the next probably hour because I have I have scoops to share with you about a sale. So watch for that. And um, I will just see you then. Thanks for joining me. Have a great rest of your day.